and welcome to another episode of Be the Teacher. In today's episode, we'll be discussing storyboards. We'll explore what a storyboard is, and we'll need to discuss shot types, because you can't draw a storyboard without understanding the shots that make up that storyboard first. So, let's get started. Storyboards are illustrations displayed in sequence for the purpose of crafting an animated or live action film. In preparing to shoot a motion picture, a storyboard provides a visual layout of events as they are to be seen through the camera lens. A storyboard is essentially a large comic of the film, or some section of the film, produced before filming to help directors and cinematographers visualize scenes and identify potential problems before they occur. Some directors storyboard extensively before taking the pitch to their funders. Others only storyboard complex scenes, or not at all. In animation and special effects, the storyboarding stage is essential and may be followed by simplified video mock-ups called animatics to give a better idea of how the scene will look with motion. If you go to the web and search storyboards, you'll see that there are plenty of resources. There are also images of movies and their storyboards. There are also videos. Some videos include how to make a storyboard, or you could even go and get a behind-the-scenes glimpse of storyboards from famous movies. In this class, when it is time for you to storyboard, I will be giving you an AFI guide, the one you're looking at now, which will have a number of different shot types, and it will also have a blank storyboard that you'll be able to fill in with your images. When you are creating a storyboard, you will be able to draw pictures that you'd like to include. You can even use stick figures if you're not a skilled drawer or you could even take photographs. There is even an app called Celtic Shots available for the iPad and the iPhone that will help you to create a storyboard, and it works in conjunction with the desktop version that I recommend you download if you're interested in making a movie. Let's get started with our storyboard, and we're going to start with the Celtics app. See, to start a storyboard, you really must look at the script. We go into the script and we look at moments where the audience needs to see many things. Those will be some of our medium and wide shots. We look at moments where characters will be talking to one another. When we get into shot types, you'll see sometimes those conversations occur in two shots and sometimes they occur in over the shoulder and reaction shots. We also look at moments of the script that stand out to us, moments that are important, because those will be the moments when we use our closest shots. This will help us to begin visualizing our film. And remember, important moments will require you to go close up to objects, so that you're revealing important information to the audience. Moments that will require the audience to take in many different things all at the same time will be our wider shots. Let's go back to our iPad for a moment and look at Celtic shots. Here, you can see the scene we were just looking at from The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. This is an example of a storyboard. You can see that there are images that have been drawn. They show what the camera will be seeing at the different points of this particular scene. What is great about a storyboard is if I was not available on a particular day as the director, I could hand this off to my assistant director, cinematographer, and crew, and they know exactly what I'm looking for in my shots. Most likely, they would take many different versions of the same shot. That way, I could choose which one was the best version of that particular shot. Here, we see that the storyboard has been completed with images that look very much like a comic book. Sometimes, directors like to take a different approach with their storyboard. Some people prefer to use programs that allow you to put the actors in relationship to the camera. Here you see some overhead shots that show where the actors are and where the cameras will be. You can also see some shots that suggest the movement of the camera that will occur. There are many different ways to do a storyboard. Once the storyboard is completed, 
you can see that we have a moment-by-moment, shot-by-shot view of what our film will look like after it's done. This not only helps in the filming process, it will also help in the editing process. It helps in the filming process because you now know the shots that you need to find and you can shoot efficiently. Movies are not filmed in order, so we would shoot all the shots that are similar at the same time. In the editing room, when the editor has all the footage that you've selected, the editor now knows how you want your movie to be assembled, so the editor can use your storyboard and the script to begin to assemble a rough cut of your movie. Let's go back to our script for a second. As I said before, moments that require the audience to know a lot of information at the same time will be wide shots and medium shots. Moments that require the audience to know very specific information will be close up. Here we have a shot of Dorothy, Tin Man, Scarecrow, and Toto walking through the Land of Oz. Here we have many characters and we have the setting. In our storyboard, this becomes a very wide shot and medium shot because we're trying to show the audience many different things all at the same time. Back to our script, here we have a moment where Toto is standing at attention. This is something that we want the audience to notice. In our storyboard, this becomes a medium close-up of Toto with his ears perked up because this is important and we want the audience to notice this particular moment. As I said before, when it is your turn to storyboard, I will give you a blank storyboard. In that blank storyboard, you'll have a place to write the project name and the scene number. You'll also have a place to draw the scene that you want to bring to life in that moment. You'll have a place to say which number shot it is. The shots for this particular scene will go in order. One, two, three, four. You'll have a place to write the type of shot you are drawing. And then the line that occurs in that scene or a little bit of information about that particular scene. For example, maybe you'll draw a conversation in a mystery movie. So you may start with a two shot of two different characters engaging in conversation. Then we may see an over the shoulder shot of the two characters as they talk. And we may see the reverse shot of what that character is looking at. We may cut back to the two characters talking again. And maybe we reveal a piece of information to the audience in a close up. For example, that there's a knife under the table. Finally, we may come back to the two characters talking to each other. Each of these shots would be filmed separately and then they would be edited together. And this storyboard could be the guide for that editor. As I said before, to understand storyboards, you must first understand the different types of shots that are available. Let's go into our AFI guide and learn a little bit more about different types of shots. Shots can be broken down into four different categories. Movement, angle, type, and size. Let's start with our sizes. We'll start close and we'll move out. As I said before, the closer you are to something, the more significant it is for the audience. We start with an extreme close-up. This would be something that is very, very important to the audience. Usually we're showing part of a whole or something that is extremely small. This is a magnified shot of a small detail, such as a subject's eye. Next, we move out. A close-up is a shot of an isolated part of a subject or an object, such as the head or the hand. Like extreme close-ups, close-ups are used at moments of intensity to show something that the audience must know about that particular scene. A close shot is similar. It is a shot with the subject and it is shown from the top of the head to mid-waist. This might be used in a moment where we're supposed to notice the reaction of a character and a little bit about that character's body language. 
a medium shot, or an American shot because it is the most popular shot in American movies, is a shot where the subject is shown from the knees up. A medium shot is another shot that asks us to look at the character and ignore the background. The character is still the most important part of this particular shot. A full shot is where we begin to transition. It's where we begin to see both the character and the surrounding of the character. It's usually a long shot that captures the subject's entire body from head to toe. The medium long shot is a shot wider than the medium shot, but not longer than a wide shot. Parts of the environment take on significance as well, and we get to see the way that the character interacts with the environment. A long shot is a shot in which the subject is at a distance, and it really begins to reveal the surroundings. Long shots are frequently used for establishing shots. They are not always establishing shots, but many times they are establishing shots. Here, notice that solid arrow. What this means is, is that the character is moving and not the camera. So, the camera would be set up, the character would enter from the left, and he or she would exit in the right. An extreme long shot is a wide-angle shot from a great distance, such as an aerial or high-angle shot of a location. Here, it is usually the environment that is the most important. We don't really see the character or the character's features. And sometimes it's used for big crowd group scenes or to show that a character is really dwarfed by his or her surrounding. This many times is also used as an establishing shot. Those are the different sizes of shots. Once you understand the different sizes, you usually combine it with a shot type. The shot size you choose and the shot type you choose will begin to tell your story in an interesting way. The first type of shot type is an establishing shot. That is a long shot that shows location and mood. Many times the slug line of the script becomes the establishing shot. A two shot is a medium or close shot wide enough for two people. It's often used to film a conversation. We then splice in different types of shots to bring that conversation to life. We'll start with a two-shot, and then we'll go to an over-the-shoulder shot. That is a shot that shows us a character's point of view, but includes the part of that character's shoulder or the side of their head in the shot. From there, we would go to another over-the-shoulder shot or a reverse-angle shot. That's a shot that is the opposite of the preceding shot, such as two characters in conversation. So you might get a two-shot, an over-the-shoulder shot, and a reverse angle shot. You see how that conversation will begin to come to life? Next we have the point of view shot, a shot from the character's point of view. And we have a reaction shot, a close shot of a character reacting to something off camera. Usually you would see what the character is looking at, and then the reaction to what was seen. A cutaway is a shot that is related to the main action of the scene, but briefly leaves it, such as an audience member's reaction to a show. These are the moments in movies like Bring It On, where we see the cheerleaders do something amazing, and then the audience go, wow, or boo hiss. Next, we have a tight shot, a shot where the subject fills the whole frame. You'll frequently see these shots in action movies when a character is running away from a bad guy. You have a flash, used in very scary movies. This is usually a very brief shot, often for shock or effect. For example, you may have a movie with two campers in a tent, and then a shot of the killer clown through the window. You'll know the killer clown is there, but the campers have no idea. They're in for a real scare. Next, we have a cameo shot a shot in which the subject is filmed against a black or neutral background. These are used in movies such as When Harry Met Sally when they're giving all the interviews, or on a show like Jersey Shore or The Kardashians when we have the cutaways and we see the character talking against a background. Next, a choker, a tight close-up, usually only showing a subject's face. 
We've come back to these particular scenes in the scary movie. When the clown was about to kill the girl or the guy, we'd see their face really tight and close up. Next, we have a freeze frame, a shot that results from repeating the same frame so the subject appears frozen. Like in those old Toyota commercials where the person jumped up in the air and then was frozen. Like I said, these different shot types are the combination of a shot type and a shot size. Each of these can come in many different shapes and sizes. We could also add an angle. Shot size, shot type, and shot angle can come together to show a very interesting story. First we have eye level shot, the most common type of shot. A shot of the subject at eye level, so the audience is seeing the character from a normal perspective. Next, we have a head-on shot, a shot where the action comes directly at the camera. That's like some of those famous summer blockbusters, like Guardian of the Galaxy, when the raccoon is flying at the camera and then flies out of frame. We have a low-angle shot, a shot filmed down low, often looking up at the subject. When a subject is filmed from below, it usually gives the subject more power. So we would combine the shot type, the shot size, and the shot angle to create a striking image. It looks like a father who is very powerful, maybe scolding his son or daughter. Next, we have a high angle shot, a shot filmed from high above the subject. These can be extreme long shots that show the city from up above, or it can be a shot where we see a character down below. Usually high angle shots like that make the character seem small or insignificant. It removes power from the character. So depending on the shot type and shot size you use, you give each of these shots a different look. Finally, we have camera movement and shot movement. Before we go into shot movement, notice this particular arrow, this open arrow. An open arrow suggests that the camera is moving. So here, the camera would be moving left and then up. This shot is a boom shot, a shot filmed from a moving boom incorporating different camera angles and levels. If you don't know, a boom is a long arm and you can put a mic or a camera at the end of it. Next, we have a dolly shot, a moving shot accomplished by moving the camera as if on a set of tracks. The open arrow means the camera is moving. The dark arrows that are closed means the people are moving. So here we have the camera following the moving people. Next, we have a follow shot, a shot in which the camera follows the subject. Next, we have a pan and a tilt. A pan is a shot where the camera moves horizontally, left to right and right to left, around a fixed axis. That means that the camera is on a tripod and it is moving from left to right on that tripod. And it is moving from one part of a scene to another. A tilt shot is a shot where, once again, the camera is on a tripod and moves up or down or vertically along a vertical axis as when it looks at a building from bottom to top or top to bottom. And finally, here's another look at the boom shot. There you see a more significant boom shot, a shot where the character runs into the scene, the camera begins to follow as the character hits the fence, and then begins to climb that fence. It's a shot filmed from a moving boom and incorporates so many different camera angles and levels. Once you begin to understand the different types of shot movement, shot angle, shot type, and shot size, you can begin to combine those elements to create interesting and unique storyboards. For example, maybe you have an establishing shot that shows a location such as a house, two characters that are inside that house talking with a two shot, an over-the-shoulder shot, back to a two shot, and maybe a flash to a killer clown. After we cut back to our two shot, 
you may get a point of view shot of the clown going after the woman in the scene. You see how that works? The way we combine the different squares of a storyboard will help us to tell our story. So to recap, storyboards all start with our script. We look into our script for the slug line, action, dialogue, and for the important moments where we may need to get the camera closer up so the audience can learn something specific. Once we understand how our script works, we go into our storyboard squares. We choose a shot size, shot type, and sometimes an angle or movement, and we put all of our images either in detailed drawings, stick figures, or in photographs onto our storyboard squares. We then number the scenes in order, say which type of shot we are using, and give a brief description or we provide the line that is being captured in this particular moment. And remember, there are applications like Celtic Shots that allows us to create a storyboard on an iPad, iPod, or iPhone. There are also applications for Android-based technology that will do the same. So that's it. That's another episode of Be the Teacher, and a very important one. You now know how to make a storyboard. So if you have a script, start figuring out which moments require you to reveal a whole bunch of information to the audience in wide shots, and what are the important details where you'll have to get close up. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Be the Teacher. I hope you learned a lot, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hi. If you're still watching, then you're in my bonus features. You can watch one of my favorite videos, The Storyboard in You, and it may help to review anything that still may be confusing about storyboards. Have fun, and thanks for accessing the bonus features. Today is Tuesday, August 14th, 2007. Take zero. Say the sound stopped and I'm Sean. I'm Peter. Today's episode is on the storyboard and you. It's about why it's important Sean. to. Look at what I found. It was just laying on my doorstep. It looks like a storyboard. Except it's no ordinary storyboard. Oh yeah. Storyboard all right. Of my life. What do you mean? It's all here, Sean. Look, here I am driving on the freeway. Here I am eating dinner. And then I checked my email. And then I went to bed. I don't get it. Why would anybody want to storyboard my life? Well, Peter, there are several reasons why. Storyboarding your life or movie helps you to visualize all of the action. This is especially important if the scene calls for dynamic action. Storyboarding is good for practical reasons, too. It gives the production crew a visual representation of what to shoot. It also ensures that everyone is on the same level as a director or cinematographer. Storyboarding each shot of a scene also ensures shot-to-shot -shot affinity, because a shoot can get hectic, and not each shot goes as planned. However, a storyboard can help a lot, as it's essentially a blueprint for the entire production. You're not listening to me. Look, in the next panel I get replaced. Instead of me standing next to you, it's some kind of stick figure with two big circles in the middle. When we shot our short film, In Memory of Counterface, which I also acted in. Doctor? <laughs> Doctor, what is it? What's the matter? What? Doctor, is the baby okay? Sean and Carrie, the writer of the short film, discussed each shot until they were storyboarded in exactly how each one wanted it to look. That way, during the production, there wasn't any second guessing as to how they were going to compose the scenes. In short, it sped things up because they were both on the same level. Yeah, and when Peter tried to shoot a short film in just one night, it was all possible because we storyboarded. He drew about 70 different shots that night. And all we used was the storyboard. The script was hardly necessary at that point. Where is Peter? And how did I get here?
I don't know. As a bit of added trivia, the director Akira Kurosawa created his storyboards by painting each scene on the canvas. And the cinematographer of the movie Amelie, Bruno Delbonel, creates his storyboards out of the photographs he shoots of the movie sets. And lastly, the Coen brothers like to storyboard their movies when they go to pitch their ideas to studio execs. Because, by knowing how their movie will look visually, it's easier to estimate its budget. As to how we storyboard, we divide the shots into panels and number them. And then we only draw the objects and the subjects that will best convey the overall composition. If necessary, we label the shot as dolly, static, or anything else, and indicate any movement with arrows. 